Have you ever tasted a whiskey that had been aged in an X something barrel and wanted to know what that tasted like? Me too. I finally have a whiskey aged in a fortified wine cask and that fortified wine. So I'm going to taste them both and see what from here has made it over to here. Hey guys, I'm Nath Martin, the Whiskey Scribe. I'm a whiskey enthusiast and I love all things whiskey, but taste is subjective and there's a lot of different whiskies out there. So whether you consider yourself a seasoned connoisseur or you just want to know more about whiskey, let's explore it together. If you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. I put up new videos every week. If you enjoy the videos, please give them a like. It really does help me out. And you can also follow me over on Instagram. I also want to say a big thank you and a shout out to Dramwares for this shirt. Legends drink Australian whiskey because I love Australian whiskey. I love supporting Australian whiskey and legends do drink Australian whiskey. And they also wear awesome shirts from Dramways. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, before I got into whiskey, I was a wine lover and I still am really. And I enjoy things like port and sherry and other fortified wines, which is probably why I'm so drawn to the whiskies that are aged in port barrels and sherry casks and sauterne casks and things like that. But because I like those kinds of wines, when I first started tasting whiskies that had been aged in things like port barrels, my first question was, who made the port? I wanted to know who made the port so I could taste it alongside the whiskey. The problem is, whiskey reps and often even distillers don't actually know where those wine barrels have come from. They're often sourced by a cooperer who will then shave, char and sell them onto a distillery. Letting them know the region and the type of wine that was in those barrels but often not the actual winery that they came from. And for larger distilleries that age most of their whiskey in sherry casks, such as Glen Farkless, given the volume they produce, they're most likely using barrels from multiple wineries. And because those barrels are coming from several different wineries, you couldn't name just one, so you don't name any. It's a single malt, but it's multiple barrels. And that's why Morris Whiskey excites me so much. They're a winery that produces award-winning wine and fortified wines, and then they started a whiskey distillery. Because why the hell not? Most of the distilleries are having to beg and negotiate to be able to get port and sherry casks at a price that they can afford and often getting far less than they actually need, whereas Morris has them right on site. They probably don't even have to load them onto a truck. They might be just rolling them from one building to another. In fact, hey, lower carbon footprint. They're sustainable. But it means if you're drinking the Morris Musket Barrel Whiskey and you want to know what that musket tastes like, you just need to go to the Morris Winery and buy their musket. It's that easy. So if you watch one of my early videos, Morris Whiskey recently sent me a bottle of their Takei Barrel to review. And spoiler alert, I loved it. Childproof lock on it, doesn't it? Try that again. You now it doesn't close. <laughs> you can catch the review there. But with that, they also sent me a bottle of the Tapaki that was in the barrel before the whiskey. Now, Tapaki is what we have to call it here in Australia. This fortified wine originated in Hungary. If it's from Hungary, you can call it Tokay. We have to call the wine Tapaki, but you can call the barrels Tokay. It's this whole thing. But what I'm gonna to do today is try these two side by side. I wanna see what flavors from the tapaki have been absorbed into the wood of the barrel and then made its way into the whiskey over the time that it's been aging in there as well. Now, if you've never had tapaki before, it's similar to musket and it's often considered the lighter, finer flavored cousin. It's made from the white wine grape variety Muscadel, which is left on the vine to develop higher levels of sugar concentration before being harvested, crushed, fermented, fortified and matured in oak barrels. Now, Morris wines are heralded amongst some of the greatest fortified winemakers in the world. And the Decay Barrel Whiskey wasn't just aged in any old Tapaki barrel. It was finished in casks that held the Morris Cellar Reserve Grand Tapaki. So this has been aged for 15 years and then the Morris Whiskey had been put into that barrel. Now, this is a limited release that you can only purchase via their website or from the Morris Cellar door. 
Now, the typical flavors that you would usually get from tapaki are things like candied fruits, honey, toffee, and even what they refer to as a cold tea character. I actually have no idea what that means. I've never tried tapaki before. This is gonna be a new one for me. Now, because it's been a few weeks since I've had this, I'm just gonna revisit it. I know I enjoy that nose and it still surprises me every time. This beautiful blend of oak and sweetness in that. It's such a fantastic whiskey. I'm still so happy with that. You've got, you've literally got those light toffee notes. You've got this beautiful fusion of the sweetness with the wood. It's got this honeyed, sort of almost syrupy texture, but it's just not overdone. And you've just got that faint waft at the back of your palate that sort of, it's, it's like, it is like an oaked white wine. And it's just beautifully well balanced. So that's, that's the Takei Barrel Whiskey. So I've got high hopes for the Tapaki. I'm, I want to actually properly compare these, so I'm going to nose this first and then see what I get from the Takei Barrel. Being a fortified wine, the very first thing I'm getting here is sugar. There's a very strong, sweet, dark fruit nose to this. Like it's sort of, it's like a candy mulberry almost. Yeah, it's like, it's like a really well done mulberry jam or Rabina berries. On the nose, I'm, I can already tell how sweet this is gonna be and there's gonna be a lot of fruit flavors in there. I don't get a lot of wood from this. It's amplified, but that sweetness that you'll sometimes get on a on just a nice red wine, that's amplified tenfold here. And it's that kind of sweetness, but it doesn't seem to carry the oak that I normally expect from wine and that you even sometimes get from a port barrel. But in comparing the two on the nose, those sweet flavors from here are a lot more subtle on the whiskey, but the whiskey is carried across with the wood notes, whereas yeah, I'm not getting the berry sweetness here. On, on the whiskey, I'm getting more of the toffee and the honey and the oak. Whereas here, I'm getting the really candy berry sweetness. Yeah, it's a sweetness that usually accompanies oak, but I'm not getting the oak on here. First taste of tobacco. Now before I talk about the flavor, let's just really admire the color here because this is coming from a white wine grape and I know that white wine can be quite a bit darker, you know, when you're fortifying it, white wine can be quite a bit darker, but that's got to be a lot of color coming from the wood itself. Like look how dark that is. That's remarkable. But the surprising thing on the taste is those really candied fruits that really came across like jam and everything, they're there. But there's this thickness of the mouthfeel, there's this sediment, not sediment, it's almost chewy. From the nose I was expecting that sweetness to be sharp, um, like really fruity and really sharp. But on the palate it's a lot more fortified. It almost feels like if sultanas or raisins, depending on where you're from, were turned into a syrup, if they were liquefied, that's kind of what this tastes like, but in a much more balanced sort of structure. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. It's this element of wine, this element of jam. It really is beautiful. And now that nose, it doesn't have as much of the candied sweetness. It's, it is more of this, I suppose, almost stewed dark berries. There's a little bit of that, again, chewy sort of oak flavor to it a bit now. Not a lot of oak which is really remarkable given that it spent 15 years in the barrel. As my first impression of Tupaki, that's a pretty damn good one. But now, the point of this exercise, how much of this is in this? This smells sweeter on the nose after having tried this, which is surprising again, because this is so sweet, I thought it would have made everything else taste far less sweet. Okay, comparing these two side by side is actually quite difficult because they are so different. This tastes a lot less sweet on the palate now after having this. I'm getting some of the more subtle whiskey characteristics coming through in here, like a little bit more of the malt. 
and I think it's just because I'm so my palate's so oversensitized to the sweetness now that I'm not picking up the sweetness here so I'm, I'm actually able to pick up other flavors which is really interesting that's not what I thought was gonna happen it's still coming across as a balanced whiskey but I'm just not tasting anywhere near the same level of sweetness after having something so much sweeter but in terms of what's carried across quite a bit of the, it is this creamy mouthfeel so it's, I don't think it's just the sugars in this that are giving it this creamy sort of texture. I actually think it's the wine itself and how it's combined with the wood. It goes down very easy. And now I'm coming back to that and I'm getting different flavors again. So I'm not getting the malt now, I'm getting... Now I'm getting just wood. So that's a really interesting one. I'm gonna say that the reason why a lot of whiskey distilleries don't sell their fortified wines with the whiskey is because they don't pair well alongside each other. The tapaki each time I'm coming to it tastes the same, it tastes beautiful. But each time I taste that and come back to the whiskey, the whiskey is tasting different. The tapaki is canceling out some of the flavors on my palate and then I'm just not picking those up anymore on the whiskey. And it's sort of, it's dulling the whiskey a little bit. I think if you want to compare a whiskey with the fortified wine that was previously in the barrel, I think what you need to do is taste them both separately. I wouldn't taste them side by side. I would probably taste the whiskey, think about it, maybe make some tasting notes. And then once you're done with the whiskey, then visit the fortified wine because they're just not on the same level. It's not the same as tasting two whiskeys side by side with each other. If you're, if you're tasting two whiskeys, you know, one from one distillery and one from another, you can taste one, taste the other, and you can go back and forth between them. Tasting this whiskey after the Tapaki cask, it's just not sort of doing it any favors. So not what I expected. So although that wasn't what I expected, I'm still really glad I did that because it's been on my mind for years. I have always wanted to do it and now I know if I get the chance to do it I'm gonna do it a little bit differently I mean you really only have to look at these side by side to know that one was definitely going to overpower the other but I like them both individually they're just not meant to go together kind of like orange juice and cheese you can like them both but you definitely don't want to have them both at the same time these are both really enjoyable I'm going to come back to both of them individually but I don't think I'm gonna have them both side by side ever again. But I, feel, I still think that's a worthwhile exercise. And I will definitely, where I can, find a wine or a fortified wine that has been in a barrel before the whiskey and try and compare them both. I'll just taste them both on separate occasions. But if you know of any other wineries where you know that their barrels are what have been provided to the distillery, please let me know in the comments below because I would love to revisit this again. I would love to also see how it's different with a wine rather than a fortified wine, which might not be quite as overpowering. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button and enjoy what's in your glass, whichever one, but one at a time, and slange. <laughs>